Hello everyone, how are you? I hope uh, everybody have a good day, had a good day today. And as you know, everybody, we had a wonderful uh, session in the last day, last uh, class, and it has been taken by International Master Siyaji Krishnu, Coach Kingsis Academy. And uh, now today's class is uh, conducted by International Master Srinath Rao, who is the coach of Masterminds Academy, uh, uh, subsidiary of Kingses Academy in uh, Muscat country. So I hope everybody who attended in the last class know the rules. Th so the first rule is everybody has to mute it. If somebody is unmuting it and talking in between the classes, we will make them uh, log out the meeting and they can't attend it back. So it's our request. Everybody, please mute your microphones. And I will hand over today's session to Coach International Master Srinath Rao. He is uh, super excited to start the sessions for all of you. Uh, all the best, guys. And we, me, myself, and Arun, myself, Saket, and Arun will be there the, as uh, the organizers and the moderators of the meeting. We will be there at any point of time to help you. And we also wanted to let all of you know we are organizing uh, an 16 years below and below 1200 rated camp from 28th of March. That is day after tomorrow. And it is also surprisingly free of cost to everyone. So all the best guys, enjoy your session. Uh, I will now hand over the session to Srinath. Srinath, you can share your screen and take the session over. Thank you, sir. Hello, hi, I'm Srinath as my friend Saket has introduced me. So how are you guys doing today? I hope you are doing all well and thank you for a wonderful response. I'm Srinath representing Masterminds and Chicking Stress Academy. And our today's topic will be on the prophylaxis. So now I'm going to share my screen and tell you what is first prophylaxis. Just a moment, please. Can you give me a moment? Okay, guys. So as I already explained, today's topic was on prophylaxis. So I want you to know what is the prophylaxis. Yeah, very good. Uh, Shant Kumar, very good. And the prophylaxis means we have to identify and stop the opponent's idea. So we can, when while we are playing a game, we can ask ourselves, what is our opponent's idea? We can see this by looking at his previous move. For example, I'm going to show you a few moves on the chessboard and I want to explain what, uh, what was the idea and what was what are we doing here. So for example, let's say e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Okay, we can just say this is the most common opening in the chess field and this is known as Rai Lopez. So in Rai Lopez, we can see that we are playing and each and every move has a purpose. So identifying the purpose, the bishop b5. Okay, I know that bishop into c6, we can capture it or we cannot capture. It's a different variation here after a6. But the I, purpose of bishop b5 move was to tell your opponent that I'm going to capture on e5. So there are two types of prophylaxis I want to tell you. One is direct prophylaxis and second is indirect prophylaxis. So the indirect prophylaxis you can see here as after a6, if white tries to capture bishop c6, d6, knight e5, black has a choice of playing queen to d4 or queen g5. This is known as an uh, indirect prophylaxis. And there is one more called direct prophylaxis. So direct prophylaxis is something like if I'm attacking something, I can just defend it immediately. Or if I can see that your my purpose of, for example, I'll play knight c3. This is just a short example. And knight c6, knight f6, and if I play something like a3 here. So the point of the move a3 was to stop the bishop b4 move, and this is also a kind of a prophylactic move. This is known as direct prophylaxis. So 
point we were talking about was asking ourselves what was our opponent's last move and what was the plan of his. And the second thing is what we will do when he does that. These are the two important things we have to remember on the topic prophylaxis. Okay. Now I'm going to show you one of my game where I played with a very strong grandmaster. A 2600 grandmaster, I won the game. And in that game, how I used the prophylaxis and how easily I can win. And I can all I also want to show you how you can win the prophylaxis. Okay, Daniel, uh, I want to tell you what is the difference between direct and indirect. Okay, direct is you can see it is going to be immediate. For example, I know bishop b4 is my move. And if the bishop b4 is my move, I stopped it by a3. My, if my opponent is going by bishop b4, I play a3 and stop immediately. And the indirect I already showed you, like something like bishop b5, a6. We already know that he's going for bishop c6, d6, knight e5. And after that, the indirect one was to play queen d4. We already have another resource. So this is known as indirect prophylaxis. So this is the difference between direct and indirect. Okay. So now I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to show you one of my game where I played with a strong grandmaster and how I easily won the game with a 2600 grandmaster without having any troubles. Just give me a minute, please. So now you can see the board. This was the game played in 2016. I was white. I was playing against the Grandmaster Popo E1. So I continued with the simple E4, C5, C3. I'm an adapting player, so I play C3 and I like this because I like to play more open positions. And the positions where I have IQP and I can do some sacrifices and I like to play the setups that I have good chances of the control on the center and more activity. So I went with C3, Knight F6, E5, Knight D5, Knight F3, okay this was all the variation theory and after Knight C3, Queen D6, D5, there after d5, there are three important moves which black can play. One is knight d4, another is knight to b4, which was played in my game, and another was knight to b8. These are the three main lines of this variation. So I want to discuss first what happens for the knight d4. Knight d4 is a pretty good variation for black. I think it is the best in this position. And after knight d4, we have an option of knight takes d4, e takes d4, queen takes d4, black tries something like e4, queen to d3. And this is a part of a theory where position is balanced for both the sides. White has a, a pass pawn on d5 and very good control, and black has a pair of bishops. So it depends who plays the better middle game and the better end game. And about knight b8, it is not a very, very strong move. It's kind of a dubious move that you have developed one piece forward and you play the same piece again and it is in the starting position. So after knight b8, white will simply play castling and try to attack on rook e1 and on e5. White will be having a very good advantage. So in the game, my opponent continued with knight b4, a6. Knight a6. So after this move f6, this is the point where I have to make a decision. Till here, I knew everything about the theory. But after f6, I know nothing. So this is the point where I have started to think. So in this point, I have to ask what is my opponent's idea and I thought my opponent idea is simply to catch 
and get a good control of the center. So, how can I play? There are two good options for white. Can you please guess and tell me the answer? Good, Atharv and Arush. Very good. The Rook D1 was one of the best move in this position, as well as the Knight E4. These two moves are very, very strong moves. I want to show you first what will happen for Knight E4. Knight E4 was played once in a game in 2008, and after Knight E4, the game continued like Queen C7, and white played here very interesting move bishop g4 at the time i was playing i did not knew about this game and yeah if i would have played this this would have been a little more interesting game like after bishop g5 black can capture f takes g5 can you guess what should be white doing Yes, good Balakrishna. So after f takes g5, we have a strong move rook c1, where we are challenging the opponent's queen, and we can see black pieces have not developed. And after rook c1, we have a very good dynamic play. And after this rook c1, white has a very good chances. Like Ritya suggested here, knight takes e5 and queen b5. It's a very good idea. So let's go back and see what happened in the game. After bishop g5, there was a game continued with e takes d5, knight takes f6, g takes f6, bishop f6, bishop g7, and the game went on and continued in a draw. This was a very imbalanced position, and this was played between two strong gun international masters. Okay, let's go with the variation which I played in the game. Instead of knight e4, I did not know this move before. I tried knight e4, I thought about knight e4 in the game, but I could not find bishop g5, to be honest. So, I went with the what I felt is the best, as you all guys suggested me, was rook d1. So, after rook d1, black played knight c7. Again, we have to see here. Black is only concentrating on capturing the d5, or he wants us to capture d takes e6. Okay, just a minute. I want to check if my mic is working or not. I'm getting a message that my voice is not working. Srinath, I think it's working. Somebody is trying to mute all, so by, maybe that is the reason you are sometimes it's getting muted, but I think it's very clear. Oh, I'm getting so many responses. Okay, sure. Okay, so after knight c7, black is uh, asking me, like whole game is, this game I'm showing you, this is based full on prophylaxis. He's asking me what I'm going to do and asking him what you are going to do. So my 
opponent asks me a question. I'm going to capture the pawn on d5 with e takes d5. What are you going to do? What? And he is also having a purpose. His idea is I, he wants me to capture d takes e6. And if I do that, he wants to develop his bishop and I will be pawned on. His pawn structure will be good. So what should I be doing here? Okay, knight e4 was a move which was suggested by a lot of you guys, but what else uh, except knight e4? Knight e4 is one of the best moves. What else we can do? First, I'll explain you why knight e4 was not working. So if we play knight e4 in this position, black has an option of playing queen to a6. And in this position, we are a pawn down and we does not we don't want to exchange the queens. So in this position, knight e4 is not a good move. And let's discuss why knight b4, knight b5 is a bad move. Because after knight b5, Black will definitely capture and I don't want any exchanges. When you have an advantage in a space advantage or development advantage, you should not exchange the pieces. But here you're trying to exchange and it will compensate your opponent. So we should try not to exchange the pieces. So I found a better move than knight e4 and knight b5, which was to play knight to h4. So the idea of knight to h4 is if you are going to capture the pawn on e d5, I'm going to go after your rook, which was queen h5, knight g6, and get her your rook. So after knight h4, black went with e d5. He felt it is not so dangerous because he is already has two pawns and he can get a knight for a rook. So it is quite manageable position. It's a enough compensation for the black. So after knight h4, e d5. I play queen h5 check. So here my opponent had a choice to play king d8 and g6. If he played king d8, I would have gone with knight d knight g6, h g6, queen h8, king e8. If he goes with bishop f5, I have a knight d5. So instead of bishop f5, if he just removes his king from the pin. Then we have simple bishop d to move and white will be having a good position. It's an equal position for both sides and both has a, both players have chances to win and fight for a win. So after queen h5 check, my opponent went with the move g6. So we can see the naturally we have we can play capture the pawn on g6. And we can get a rook. This is what I did. So after queen takes h8, bishop f5, bishop h6, long castling, bishop f8, rook h8, queen g7, and rook d8. Okay, till here the moves were forced, and I don't think I had a much better move, neither did my opponent. So after rook d8, I want you to think how should I continue? Yes. Correct Spider Man, but I don't know your real name. So after Rook D8, I, I played Rook A7. So bringing all the pieces to the game. So after Rook A7, 
my opponent no i am going to play knight b5 so as a prophylaxis my opponent went to king b8 so after king b8 here is the main move you have to find it's a very very important move i want you to take a time and think and tell me Guys, please take some time. The move is not so easy to find. Okay, uh, I'm getting an answer from you guys like knight takes b5. Can you please tell me what happens after knight takes b5? If you go for rook d5, queen d5, queen c7, okay. King a8, queen c8. Yeah, but after queen c8, rook c8, rook c8, bishop c8, it's not a checkmate, Atharv. Sir, I did not tell this answer. There's another other Don't talk. Okay, let's see. Knight D5 is not working because of you guys are missing the bishop here. Queen C8, Rook C8, Rook C8, and there's nothing we, we have. So the move I played in the game was to play H3. F3 is a good idea, but the thing is after F3 you're kind, kind of weakening your king. In the diagonal of uh, G1, A7. So you should go with the move H3 instead of F3. So the h3 idea is simple. We are going to play g4 and we have our idea is to come to knight to e4 and double attack queen and pawn. So after h3, he is not comfortable with my queen on g7. So after rook d7, queen g8, rook d8, queen g7. I was low on time already. I was in three minutes, so I was just repeating to gain some moves and gain some time. But instead of playing rook d7 again, I would have went queen h6 and tried something else. But my opponent went here g5. So he wants to take some risk. So what should white do here? Yes, as I already explained to you, G4 was a very, very good move here. Bishop, uh, pawn G4, Bishop C8, or wherever Bishop goes, you will have trouble with the pawn. But I had another idea in my plan, in my mind. So instead of G4, I went with Knight A4. The idea of Knight A4 is to go to Knight C5. And yeah, Knight A4. Yes, Sanjay, Knight A4. So after knight a4, the idea was to go knight c5 and try to uh, play g4 later. 
So I will be controlling more squares and I will also be having some pressure on the B7 pawn. So the after knight A4, my opponent went with the move D4. So he He's trying to push pawns and trying to achieve a queen if possible. So after d4, knight c5, b6, knight d3, bishop d3, rook d3, knight d5. So you can see here, black's idea is to play knight f4. What should we do here to stop it? So the we should play g3 to stop the knight f4 immediately. So after g3, black went to knight e7. Can you guess the idea and also tell me the move? Okay, the rook good. Knight f5 is the idea. And how will you stop it? Good sparsh. Rook f3. So knight f5 is the idea then rook f3 is the way to stop it. So this is a simple prophylaxis. My opponent wants to go to knight f5. I want to stop by rook f3. My opponent went with knight d5, protecting his pawn. And what is his next idea? Good, good, good Gautam. So the idea for black is to play e4. And how can we stop the e4 move? Salenia, good. So the move was queen g6. Yeah, you can also try queen h7, but the problem is we are not pinning the f pawn anymore. So I want to keep more attack on the f6 pawn and keep my queen on g6. And also we are trying to fix this on f6 so he cannot have another chance to push the pawn. So after queen g6, black played queen e6. Again, his idea is to play e4 also trying to capture the pawn on h3. What should we do now? Very good, Balakrishna. So we should play queen e4. So after queen e4, if black tries queen takes h3, what can we do? Good Raj. So after queen takes h3, we can play rook takes f6 here. After rook f6, knight takes f6, queen takes e5, king a8, queen takes f6, rook h8, queen c6, king b8. Okay, if we want here a draw, we can easily manage to make a draw by queen c7, queen c6 check. But if we want to fight for win, we can just exchange the queens and we can try to take the advantage of the outside pass pawn, which we will create from these two pawns, g3 and f2. But it will be a very, very hard way to win. But yeah, drawing is always in our hand. So my opponent played with knight e7, instead of taking the pawn on h3. So again, we can see the idea for black is to play f5. How should we stop the move f5? Thank you. 
Yeah, Archit, please don't spam you. Good Ayush. So we should play Rook E1. So the Rook E1, the purpose was to stop the F5 pawn. We can just capture the E5 pawn. So after Rook E1, Rook D5. Why not G4? Okay. So with G4, if you play G4 in this position, the problem is knight d5 and knight f4 his knight will be having very very good square on f and we cannot do anything to expect that knight from f4 he will be having the rook h8 and he will be targeting our h3 pawn so we cannot do anything so that's why we will play rook to e1 so after rook e1 we are trying to attack the pawn on e5 so my opponent went rook d5 to protect that pawn and again he's trying to play f5 now so what should we do here after rook d5 Okay, guys, if we try to play g4 here, the problem will be black will just retreat his rook to d6 or anywhere in the d file or maybe on c5. Then he will try to play knight d5 and f4. That will be his plan. So I don't think the move g4 will be good for here. As Arthur was already suggested in this position, queen g4. So after queen g4, the idea is. If black push the pawn to f5, we can capture the g5 pawn. So my opponent felt like if he plays f5, he still be managing to have two pass pawns on e4 and d3. So he went on with f5 move. So the after f5, I play queen g5 as we already discussed, e4. Now in this position, this is a critical position. I want you to take at least two minutes before answering me. What is the best move for the white here? first I, I gave you the two minutes of time please don't give me answers until those two minutes i want you to think you are just rushing if you just trust you won't be understanding anything first take two minutes think and then tell me
very good guys so after you took some time almost maybe 10 to 15 guys of you found the best move here which was g4 so the idea of g4 we should always strike on the base of the pawn structure so the f5 is the base of the pawn structure here and after playing g4 we are striking on the end so after g4 he cannot capture e takes f3 because the queen is pinned what can black do here after g4 what are the options available he can try the move d3 if he plays d3 i will just move my rook to rook f e3 and if he tries to capture f take g f takes g4 we have the check on f4 and we will capture the e4 pawn so there will be no more pass pawns left there will be d3 pawn but it won't be that strong because it is not connected with another pawn and if it is not connected with another pawn it will be easy for us to win the game so d3 is a good move which he should have played but my opponent went with queen d6 it is kind of a dubious move so here we can see our rook is under danger so i think the best move here was to play rook f4 so the idea of rook f4 is if we capture manages to capture f takes g4 we will have rook f8 and we can capture queen takes g4 and there will be some trouble for black side on e4 pawn and also some threats in future on c8 square so after rook f4 black played d3 so last hope for black is to get something out of those two pass pawns so after d3 we will go to g takes f5 d2 rook d1 okay so in this position black managed to push the pawn till d2 black has managed to push the pawn till d2 now the voice is not breaking because i heard some noise i went for muting after d2 we, i went with rook d1 the idea is now i'm going to move my rook and going to capture the e4 pawn and do i need to worry about the g5 no i don't need to worry about the g5 anymore because the rook cannot attack me there's no more danger if something comes like queen g6 it's fine i don't care i'll just capture the queen g6 and i'll have a good position i'll get extra peace so after rook d1 black went with queen e5 so again the idea is to push e3 pawn and he wants to break after f takes e3 queen takes e3 king will be uh, unsafe and he will be having the most like queen e1 and there will be a lot of trouble with the rook So after queen e5, what is the best move for white? Very good sponge so we will go with the move rook h4 i was a uh, lot of you guys have already suggested me rook g4 but the problem with rook g4 is our rook is not active if we want to activate our piece we should put the rook on h4 and if our opponent captures an f5 pawn, f5 pawn with a knight or queen 
If queen takes f5, we will have the knight on e7. So it is not possible. So the only possible move is knight takes f5. And if he does that, we will have a rook on 7th rank. And the rook is very, very strong. So here, my opponent played a blunder, which was queen to e6. I will explain which, what he should have played instead of queen e6. But after queen e6, you have to find me the best move, which is a winning move. Please take a two minutes of time and try to think and tell me the answer. Neil, can you please continue your variation? Neil, can you please continue your variation? drag very good so after this position we'll go with rook takes d2 rook takes d2 and rook h8 check so after rook h8 check we can easily capture the d2 pawn and there will be no more threat of the double attack a lot of you guys wrote queen takes d2 pranil you wrote queen d2 the mistake is after queen d2 we're losing a rook so we cannot do this so first we have to give a check on h8 after rook h8 king b7 then capture queen takes d2 the best move for black would have been queen to e8 but this position is already better for it's already close to winning so after queen e8 we'll play something like queen f4 check knight to d6 and king to h2 white king is safe the rook is on seventh rank and d2 pawn is about to fall so this position is clearly winning position for white so after rook h7 black should have played queen e8 but it is already worse position and he made a blunder which was queen to e6 rook takes d2 rook takes d2 rook h8 check king b7 Queen takes d2. So because the position is already losing for black, black thought he should try to create some imbalance. So he played e3. So he wants to confuse me and give some checks when I have 30 seconds on my clock. So after e3, f takes e3, knight takes e3. I have to be very, very careful with the perpetual checks. And also with the night folks. When you have 30 seconds, it's a very, very difficult task to manage. So after knight e3, rook h7, my opponent went with king a6. So I have to be keeping all the pieces supported. So yeah, I first I thought about queen e2 and rook g7. It can be very dangerous. So I went with queen b3, b5. So my rook is now protected. 
and there I cannot see any checks possible right now except Queen G8. So it's fine. I should not be worried about Queen G8 because of Queen G8, King F2, the knight will be under attack. And I cannot see another check for black where he won't be losing the knight. So after B5, A4, at a pin P should be attacked. So I attack the pawn. I'm trying to threaten the checkmate. Knight C4, A B5. King a5, rook k7, and the rest was very easy. I'll just show you my game. Okay, so after rook c7, we'll just capture with queen takes c4, and we are having the two extra pawns, and this is an easy win for white. So we can see the power of prophylaxis. From a point, we were just, we just, I just stopped thinking because I just had a one minute or two minutes on my clock, I stopped thinking. And what I did was just replying my opponent's moves. What is his plan? I was predicting it correctly. And after I predicted those moves, I just went with the answer. First, you have to find what your opponent's idea. Once you get it, you just play the move, stopping it. You can do directly. In this game, the game, everything was mostly direct prophylaxis, not the indirect. We might have seen indirect maybe one or two times, but I think most of the times it was direct prophylaxis only. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to show you one position. And I want you to solve. I want at least you guys to take at least two minutes of time before answering me. guys you can see the position on your screen this is black to play can you find the best move first whenever you're writing me the answer write the idea of that move first write the idea of that move what is the white's idea and how you are stopping that move It's black to play. I want you guys to think at least two to three minutes, two minutes to three minutes to tell me the best move. Please don't rush.
very good guys g5 is a perfect move so after g5 the idea is to stop the idea of white which was knight f4 and knight d5 very good okay let me give you one more example in this position just a second Okay, guys this is the new position white to play white was kalpo the best positional player in the world so i want you to again find the idea of black and find the best move for white to stop it Okay, guys. Let's discuss the answers which I got so far. The answers I got here was one f4, and second bishop h4, and one more is knight a2. These three answers I got here. Let's discuss all the variations. 
So let's say if y plays f4. So after f4, what is the problem? Black can capture e takes f4. After e takes f4, bishop takes f4. We have to look at the, what are the problems. The problem is e4 pawn. It is now a backward weak pawn. Second thing, after f4, e f4, bishop f4, when the knight moves from f6 to maybe let's say to h7 or d7, from h7 he can go to g5 and try to attack on our king side by putting the king on h8 and rook g8 and trying to attack on g2. Or he can play knight d7, bishop d4, and knight e5. This idea is also possible for black. So b f4 was definitely a bad move. Now let's see. Knight a2. So you can see knight a2 is not a very good move. Knight b4, knight on b4 is struck. So it's not a good option for us to play knight a2. Knight takes a2 will be from continued. Rook takes a2, a6. Bishop h4 was the move which we should play here. So after bishop h4, the idea is clear. We have to move the knight from c3 to e2 or d2 to f1 to go to g3. This is the idea for white to go to knight to e2, g3, h5 or f1, g3, h5. Or maybe from g3, we can go to f5 also. Maybe from knight f1, knight e3, knight f5 also. These are the two ideas which we can compose here. So after bishop h4, black went with king to h8. So the idea of king h8 is he wants to utilize the g file for his rook and try to give us a counter. So after king h8, knight e2, rook g8, c3, we are kicking our opponent's knight from b4. The knight was a little bit awkward on b4. He could have made some trouble on c2 pawn if we tried to move the queen in future. So we are kicking the knight by playing c3 and pushing it to a6 well. After playing c3, knight c a6, knight g3. So our plan is clear here. We are going to put our knight on h5 and trying to grab the bishop on g7. After getting that bishop, the f6 knight will be pinned and black will be facing a lot of troubles after that. After knight g3, black has an option of playing bishop f8. This move, bishop f8, was suggested by the world champion Gary Kasparov. He felt bishop f8 and knight f1 and bishop e7. This was a better manual and better option for black. But in the game, white black went with queen f8, which was a little bit dubious move. Queen f8, knight f1, knight h7, knight e3, bishop f6, bishop f6, knight f6, and knight f5. White has achieved a very, very strong position now. His knight is well placed. His all pieces are good, coordinated. He will be soon trying to attack with queen d2, king f2, g3, rook h1, and there will be a lot of troubles on h1. After 10 moves, white won easily. And the game is not relevant. So we will try to go for the next position.
Okay, this is the very interesting position which I in this which is in front of you. This was played between uh, Hari Krishna, a strong grandmaster from India, and Bangladeshi grandmaster Enamul Hussein. So I want you to guys think for five minutes at least. Even if you send me the correct answer before five minutes, I will not reply to you. I want you to at least think for five minutes. Find what is the idea of the black. What are the things possible for white to do here? I want at least minimum three to four moves of calculation here. Telling me why are you doing what is happening here and everything. Take at least five minutes to 10 minutes. Five minutes is the best, I think. So I will give you five minutes now. Please think and let me know the answer. It is white to play here.
am not able to hear the voice. I am not able to hear the voice. I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. I'm not able to hear anything. Sir is not speaking. Sir is not speaking. Okay, guys, I am getting an answer from you on one moves. I cannot accept the one move answer from you guys. And some of you wrote the variations also. Very good. But I want to actually know what is the idea of black? First, I want to know what is the idea of black. Then you tell me what is the what are the measures you are taking to prevent that? Okay. Black's idea is to capture the C4 pawn. Definitely, A5 rook is hanging, but the another idea is to capture the C4 pawn. So, what are the measure, measures we are trying to do here to see that he cannot capture the C4 pawn? As Pradeep and Athar suggested me, after this position, White should play the move rook to A4. After rook to A4, Queen takes c4. Yes, now first I want to tell you what happens for rook a8. Rook a8 is, is the one of the most natural moves we can play here. But the problem with rook a8 is black can capture queen takes c4, queen takes c8, queen takes c8, bishop d2, attacking the b4 pawn, bishop e7, protecting the pawn, c3 because our pawn is hanging on c2. After c3, b takes c3, bishop takes c3, and castling. I think after this position, black is fine. The position is equal. So we won't be achieving anything. 
after playing rook a8. So as Atal and Pradeep suggested here, to play rook a4, the idea of rook a4 is that when our opponents captures queen takes c4, we will be ready with the move c3. This is an indirect prophylaxis. You guys ask me a lot, what is indirect prophylaxis? This is what the indirect prophylaxis is. So after we play rook a4, queen takes c4, white plays c3. So we are trying to stop from him by castling because after queen c4, the idea is definitely for black is to. So we played c3, we're trying to attack the pawn on b4 and we have to look the ways how black can protect that pawn. So there are two ways to protect the pawn on b4. One is bishop to e7 and rook to b8. So the rook to b8 was played in the game. But I want you to know what will happen after bishop e7. So after bishop e7, I want you guys to think again, prophylaxis, what your opponent is trying to do in this position and what you are going to do to stop those ideas. Guys, at least take two minutes of time because this is a, one of the strongest players are playing in, uh, between each other and it is not an easy move to find and it is not an easy idea to find so easily in just a 10 seconds or 20 seconds. I want you guys to think a little bit and then answer me. What is the idea of the move after Bishop Isan? What is the purpose of that move and why is he playing that? Yes, he's trying to protect the pawn, but what else is his another idea? I want you to find another idea for black and how you are going to stop that idea. Okay, guys, so the idea for black is to just to castle and run away. So after bishop e7, white played rook to a7. So after rook a7, our idea is to stop our opponent by castling. So after rook a7, black has two choices here. One to play bishop f6 and another is b takes c3. B takes c3 is a blunder. 
what can we do after BTEC C3? Very good. We can play after BC3, Queen B7, attacking the queen bishop on E7. So he cannot move the bishop. So that only choice for black here is to play queen to C6 chick. So after queen C6, if black goes with queen D5, we can capture the queen and play rook E1, and we will be getting the bishop on E7. So after queen B7, black plays queen C6, queen takes C6, Rook x c6. Then we will try to stop his castling by playing rook a8 check. Bishop b8. Rook b1 attacking the bishop into e7. So this is the only way he can protect his bishop. So after king e7, b takes c3, rook x c3. So this position is if we just see the material. This position white is having, black is having an extra pawn. But we can get an exchange by playing simple bishop a3. But after bishop a3, the problem is bishop a3, rook takes a3, rook takes a3. Black can defend this position very well because the four pawns on the king side was three pawns. He can just simply play bishop c7 and bring the rook to c8, and the position is easy, easy for him to defend. It is an equal position. And in the end game theory, I don't think you can do, you can manage to achieve anything more than draw in this position, unless your opponent makes a very, very big blunder. So what we should do here is, instead of bishop a3, we should go for bishop b2. So after bishop b2, we are challenging the rook. If rook goes to c2, we have bishop a3 check, and we are going to get the d8 bishop for free. And if he manages to play rook b3, trying to stay in the same square where, he, where we cannot play the bishop a3 move, we can play bishop takes g7, rook g. And after this position, I want you guys to find the best move. White play and win. White is getting a free piece. Can you please find the variation and send me on the message? Guys, if you gave me one move each, I cannot understand. Good Srinivas and Unon. So after rook g8, we will play rook a7 check. King moves to e8, rook takes d8, king takes d8, and rook a8. And now we are winning a rook. And after we capture the rook back, we will be having extra pace, and it is very, very easy to win after this position. So let's go back. Let's go back to the position c3. And here I already told you there were two options possible. One was bishop e7, and another was the rook b8, which was played in the game. After rook b8, how should we continue? Again, guys, uh, an immediate answer is not a solution. First, you have to think here at least for three minutes and find the best move.
excellent leela jal sorry leela j krishna so the idea is to play rook e1 so our plan is to play rook e4 and we will be going to capture the b4 pawn for free because we are using this pin so after rook to e1 if we play simple castling we'll get a pawn by rook e4 and after e rook e1 if black plays something like queen to c8 getting away from the pin we can just develop the bishop to f4 if opponent tries something like queen d7 if you capture my rook i'll capture yours then we can play rook a1 okay the problem with rook takes b4 was there will be a doubled pawns so that's why we are not going with the rook takes b4 yeah there will be will definitely be a extra, having extra pawn but the double pawns and he will castle his king will be safe it won't be enough to win so we need to go for different measures which is like bishop f4 queen d7 rook back to a1 now his rook is under attack so black has to defend by playing rook d8 so after playing rook d8 we'll play rook d1 queen b5 rook x d8 bishop and c takes b4 now this position is clearly uh, better for white if black castles we have bishop d6 and our rook is on this side we can play rook a8 later there will be a problem with lot of pins and if black went to directly with queen takes b4 we will have b queen to c6 and we'll get a queen or there will be a lot of compensation for that attack for example queen takes b4 queen c6 check king e7 king f8 fails because of bishop d6 check and after this also i think we can still do this trick bishop d6 queen d6 and rook a7 i think we are still winning here so we should go back and black played bishop to e7 protecting the pawn on b4 so how should we continue now again black's plan is to castle and run away what should we do here very good guys so after playing bishop e7 rook a7 is a very good move so idea is we are stopping our opponent to castle so after rook a7 i'm going to tell you all there are three options one b takes c3 the second option rook d8 and the third option is to play h6 i want you guys to think all the three variations and after thinking all the three variations can you please give me a detailed variation detailed answer about what is the best move after all these three variations i am going to repeat again i am going to write in the all chat so after i send in the all chat you please wait for at least 5 minutes and try to think all these three variations after you find all these three variations Okay, Kathar. I'll give you ten minutes. All, all, I will give all of you guys ten minutes to think. I will give you three variations on the chat. It's it will be up to you. If you write fast and if you try to spam, you will be losing the all three moves. You have to scroll and check, find the answers, and fill the problem for you. So I will write in the answer the top three moves which I already showed you on the position. And please write the answers to me or uh, to the organizer. what is the plan of the black after playing that move all the three moves and you have to tell me what are we doing trying to do to prevent and what are our idea and at least give me an idea of at least three moves
Okay, guys. So I have sent you on the chat all the all the three best possible variations for black. Please try to figure out and tell me.
Okay, guys. So let's discuss now. Uh, who is Mr. SS? It was a very beautiful answer I got from you. So, okay, let's discuss most one by one. Shiv Som, okay, very good. Very good, Shiv. So, after Rook A7, there are the three moves which we discussed here. One, B takes C3. So after B takes C3, B takes C3. The simple idea is we are not only going with the bishop to G5, we are also going to bishop to A3. So after going to bishop to a3, we are trying to deflect the bishop from e7 and we are going to have an, a good at a strong attack on f7.7. So this bc3, bc3, as you guys already thought about it, and it is was very, very good. It was correct. For example, if black plays something like queen c5 to stop it, what we should be doing? So yeah, uh, so after queen c5, we will play bishop e3, attacking the queen. And when the queen moves back to c4, we will have our move bishop to g5. And this position is very, very good for white. Now let's go back and try the rook move, rook d8. So the purpose of the move rook d8 was to play queen to d5 and exchange the queens. So how can you stop this idea? Good so has. So after rook d8, we should play rook to e5. And after rook e5, we are stopping our opponent to play queen to d5. So after rook e5, what else are the plans we can think of? The next plan for the white is to play queen to b7 and continue with the attack on e7 bishop and f7 pawn. So only way to stop for black is to play rook to c8 bc3 will fail because of the queen b7 so he will play rook to c8 so after rook to c8 we still continue with queen to b7 queen to c6 queen takes c6 rook takes c6 rook check bishop d8 and white played here rook e4 the idea is we are threatening our opponent that we are going to capture rook takes b4 and another threat is we are going to play rook d4 to attack the pinned piece okay so after bishop d8 rook e4 black went through with b takes c3 rook d4 into e7 b takes c3 rook takes c3 bishop g5 f6 okay in this position we can also see there is one more move called bishop d2 but whenever we are going to a certain position and we can change the nature of the position by just giving a check for example in this position when we play bishop g5 check we are blocking the opponent's king move to f6 and after going to bishop to g5 when black played f6 he has no longer having the square f6 for the his king and now after bishop d2 Wherever the rook moves, we have the move bishop b4. So after the move bishop d2, let's see what happens after rook b3. Can you find the best move for black? Sorry, the best move for white? White to play and win.
Okay, so after rook b3, we will play rook a7 check into e8, rook takes d8, king takes d8, and rook a8 check. And now we are getting the piece again. We will be having extra piece, and white will be winning. Let's go back. Instead of rook takes b3, there was another option available for black, which was to play e5. So how are we going to continue after the move e5? Any guesses? Good, Ayush. So after e5, we can play. Yeah, definitely we can go with the move rook d8. But after rook d8, rook d8, rook d8, rook g3, hg3, king d8. And this position, if we see, there are four pawns against two pawns and the bishop. So what I want to say is it's not so easy to win this position. There will be, if you, you should be a very good master in the end game and you should use a lot of energy and tactics here. So the better way to win here is to play rook to a7 check. If black goes to king e8, we will get capture the d8 with a check. And if he captures black, we have bishop into c3. We'll get a piece and we will save an extra pawn. And if black plays king to e6, we'll give a check. King moves to f5. If the king goes back to king to e7, we can play rook g4 and attack the pawn on g7 as well as we are attacking the rook on c3. It's like a double attack. So if we place king to f5, we can play g4 check. So right now after g4 check, we protected the pawn which was under attack on g3. And after playing g4 check, king g6, now we can easily capture rook d8, rook d8 and bishop c3. Now we are a piece up and we are having a rook on the board and we have a, a bishop for a pawn and this is easier and a better way to play than the one which we saw with the rook takes d8 okay so after this we are only left with one one move which was the fourth move after rook a7 h6 so the idea of h6 was to stop the move bishop g5 so after black played h6 in the game White went with bishop f4, rook d8, bishop e5, centralizing his bishop and tried to create more weakness by provoking f6. So after bishop e5, f6, bishop to c7, again trying to attack the rook and wherever the rook moves, he will be in trouble. If he moves, if he leaves the rook from the 8th rank, there will be back rank check and he will lose the rook. And if he goes to rook c8, we will have queen b7. So if we check again, for example, if he moves the rook anywhere else, if for example, rook d5, we'll have the check, rook, c, rook a8, bishop moves. And can you guys tell me what we can do here? Okay, right. rook e6 is a fine move, but the best move here is to play rook takes d8. Rook takes d8, bishop takes d8, king takes d8, queen a8 check, rook, a, rook queen c8, queen a7. And the king is on the last rank. We have a very strong attack with rook d1, queen takes g7, and black is about to lose. Okay, so after this position, let's go back. The position where I say 
After bishop c7, the only other move left for rook was on c8. After rook to c8, white played queen b7 and black resigned. So what happens after, we can ask, what happens after castling? Black is safe now. Can you guys help me out? White to play and win. Good Srinivas. So after this castling, white will play bishop d6 and there is a pin on g7 and white is winning easily. Very good. Okay guys, so after this I'm going to give another position. This game was played by Vladimir Kramnik, a former world champion. Okay guys, a new position will be on your screen now. This position, first we have to, first you have to find the, what is the black's idea in this position. Once you figure it out, then please tell me what is your move, what is your plan and how are you going to continue this position? Uh, I think I'll give you five minutes.
Okay, guys. So I want to say, Srinivas and Shiv, you have done the very good, great job. The idea of Black is to play Knight C4 and trying to kick our Bishop from A3, which is perfectly placed there. And also, the problem for White is the Bishop on F3 is not well placed. It is having a lot of trouble. So the best way to do both together, preventing the knight c4 and also improving the bishop to a better diagonal is to play queen c1. So the idea is as followed by bishop to d1, bishop to b3 and trying to gain this diagonal a2 g8. So this was the idea behind the move queen c1. So after queen c1, Black played queen c4. So after queen c4, the idea is Black wants to exchange the queens because he was having some trouble with the space. So he wants to exchange some pieces to gain in order to gain more space. So after queen c4, White continued with his plan, which was bishop to d1 because he's having a paired bishop advantage. He wants to improve his bishop to a better square. So after bishop d1, queen takes c1, rook takes c1, rook fc8. Now, in this position, Kramnik went with little bit of inaccuracy. He should have played knight d3 because the c6 pawn is already a target for us. So it is already better. Okay, it's really good to keep the knight on c5, but the problem is. We should have retreated and went for the another weakness. There is something called in chess, which is for, known as principle of two weaknesses. So the one target was on c6 pawn. So we are trying to shift our target to another pawn. We can play bishop b3 anytime. There's no need to be hurrying about that. I got in, in the previous portion also, we were, we all of us wanted to play bishop f for so many times. Just because there is some tempo available, it doesn't mean we should go further tempo. Okay, so after rook f c8, bishop b3 check, which was played by Kramnik. It was a little bit inaccuracy, as I already told you. After king h7, still now also knight d3 would have been the best move, and white would have maintained the clear advantage. But white played knight to e6, black played a5. Can you guess next two moves?
Okay, so the game continued as yes. white played knight takes g7, king takes g7, then bishop e6. So we are trying to. What are we trying to do? We are trying to attack the rook. And if the rook moves, we will having we are having the bishop d6 move. So rook cannot move. If rook cannot move, black has to play knight d7 to prevent the attack. So if we place after knight d7, we can still at, increase the pressure by attacking the pin piece. And after rook e d1, rook a7, white played f3, and white had a slight advantage. But white could have gained more advantage if he would have played knight d3. So in the fifth move, instead of playing knight e6, if white would have played knight 2 d3, and try not to exchange some pieces and try to maintain the pressure on e5 and c6 together. White would have won easily. And the, there was some inaccuracy. So after the game uh, went like more 30 more moves and the game went in, in, it was a draw. Okay, so draw the game is not important anymore. Important is how we found the move queen c1 and then bishop d1 move and bishop b3 idea. Okay, guys. Okay, then. Uh, I will try to give you one tactic. Okay, one tactical position. We, are, we have been doing a lot of positional positions, so I want you to try one more tactic and then we will see later. Guys, you can see the tactical position. It's white to play and win. It's white to play and there is a forced checkmate. Please find and give, give me the answer till checkmate. Please don't give me the half answers or one more answers. Please try to give me. Excellent guys. So after this position, we are going to play Queen D8 check. So after Queen D8, there is also one more option all of you guys are missing is to play King F7. Black can still play King F7. So after King, if we place King F7 instead of capturing the Queen on D8, we can play E6. If Bishop E6, Knight E5 checkmate. If he captures king takes e6, then knight f4 and knight e5 checkmate. Then if he goes directly with king to g6, we have knight f4, king h6 and queen h4 checkmate. So anywhere king moves, it's still a checkmate. So queen d8 check, king takes d8, bishop g5 check, king moves to e8, 
rook d8 check, king f7, pawn push e6 check. If bishop takes e6, knight f5 checkmate. If black plays king to g6, knight f4 checkmate. So still there is a checkmate. So only other option left was king captures e6. And still after king captures e6, knight f4 check, and king f7, and knight e5 checkmate. Excellent arrow and excellent shoe. You have done very good job. Okay, guys. Um, so this uh, was the last we... position for you guys. You have done a wonderful job and you have been a very, very patient and yeah, I really enjoyed working with you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Srina. Thanks a lot for your session. Uh, myself, I just became, uh, I just started loving the session after I started as an organizer, but I just loved the way you have taken the session. It was an amazing uh, experience for uh, all the kids. I hope kids are enjoying the class and uh, hope for uh, future classes with us. Uh, just wanted to share something with you guys. Uh, whoever leaving can leave after two minutes from now. Uh, we are doing an online uh, camp for uh, below 1200 and under 15 kids. So if somebody is interested, can contact with the contact us uh, in email or in website or in phone and also all the videos are getting uploaded in King's Sys Academy YouTube page so you have to subscribe here in King's Sys Academy YouTube page to get both the recorded videos so that you can listen the video whenever you want to